back to my channel. My name is Melissa Rodriguez and I'm a second year medical student. Today, I have a very special guest. I have Amaris here. She's an M3 student. And I figure I will invite her to one of my videos to ask her about rotations. Since um, she's almost done with them, uh, in our school, rotations start around May, right? Yeah. So I am about to be in what she's already finishing. So I figured I will ask her some questions and just get all the knowledge I can get. <laughs> she's also my M3 mentor and really good friend. So I'm very, very excited to have her in my channel today. Thank you for having me. So I have a bunch of questions that I just wrote. And so we're just going to go with the flow here. And if you have any additional questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments. And um, I'll make sure to ask her later and we'll, we figure it out. <laughs> but I just want to get an idea of how to prepare for rotations in general. Um, so my first question will be, what do you think makes a good third year medical student? I think there are a couple things that make a good third year medical student. I think probably one of the most important things is to have a good communication skill. So that includes how you address patients, their families, and the team you're working on. Um, as well as how receptive you are to what they have to say. So you want to make sure you're able to ask the questions you have to ask no matter how uncomfortable they might seem. I remember starting on OBGYN and sometimes the sexual history can be a little intimidating to ask. I know. Um, so I actually had one of my first patients tell me, just ask the questions you want to ask. Don't hesitate. She was very nice about it. Um, and she said, when you hesitate or are kind of weird about the questions you ask, it makes the patients feel as if you're giving them time to think of a better answer than what they would have told you initially to kind of hide something. True. So you have to be comfortable just saying things. Obviously, you want to be polite and professional at the same time. Um, and you also want to make sure you are good at explaining things. Don't use medical jargon that your patients and their families might not understand. Um, so talk in our everyday language yeah. when, you're, when you're explaining things. Okay. So communication skills, obviously you need to be good at time management because you're going to have a lot of things to do um, between studying and seeing patients and preparing presentations and notes and um, okay. including assessment and plans and stuff. Um, and if you were to give three tips, like your top three tips uh, for third year medical student in terms of preparation or anything like that, what would they be? So top three, um, number one would probably be get used to a routine. So if you have to wake up at 5 a.m., let's say, to make it to the hospital on time, and you're done with that rotation, and the next rotation you're on, you don't need to wake up theoretically until 7 o'clock, Still wake up at five o'clock. Get mm. you get, keep being in that pattern. Um, don't break that good habit that you're in. If you have extra time, use that time to study. Do your UL questions. Read up on something you you have an idea you might be asked about on rounds. Um, do your Anki cards if that's what you're into. Exercise, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, you don't want to break that good habit. Um, number two would be. Um, Learn to be flexible, learn to be um, adaptable, is that the right word? Adaptable. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because you're going to be changing a lot. Attendings, well first of all things depend on what hospital you go to and you know what you're allowed to do and then things also depend on the attendings you're with and the residents you're with. So you're going to be changing the way you do things. You Sometimes they're not going to be upfront with what they want and you have to uh, you'll realize that everyone has their own expectations of things and you kind of just have to find your way um, to what they want or you can just ask and still, You're going to be meeting a lot of people. You're going right? to be meeting a lot of people and everyone has their own unique ways of doing things and things that they like in terms of like presentations and writing mm -hmm. your notes and even how you examine patients. Um, and then you'll realize too, like you'll be on a rotation for five weeks, you'll be good at it by the 
end of the last week or the, by the last week and then you'll have to switch to something else and then kind of start fresh and you're like well now yeah like, now the new one again <laughs> exactly, exactly so be uh, flexible and then the third thing would be um study 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 don't i know it's difficult you, you're gonna come home late sometimes tired you know exhausted um but keep studying make that um how much priority. will you say every, like, do you study every day if you do how much so definitely study every day um it depends on how much time you have um i don't want to say an hour and then you know you get home and you're in bed by <laughs> half an hour because you're just so exhausted but I would say ideally maybe an hour read up on cases you saw that day or if you if there was an admission coming in before you left and you didn't stay for it and you know when that is read up on it because you're going to be asked about the next case day. the next day also at the medical student level by the way you're not expected to know at least as a third year you're not expected to know the mm. the treatment dosages and like do you make suggestions you can make suggestions um you can even just say i think the patient needs to be on doxycycline for example and but not the exact dosage yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> okay that's exactly. good that's yeah good. <laughs> there's a lot you, you're not expected to know everything that's a big takeaway i think um you're really there to learn Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many mistakes you give when you're giving a presentation um, in terms of the assessment and plan like they will correct you and they will teach you how things should be done and they will also fill in like the little nuances like dosing and stuff like that so don't stress about it you are there to learn one question i have specifically when you're in the in the hospital and you're seeing the patient I saw like various people see the patient, like the resident sees the patient, the attending, you, another medical student yeah. probably. Um, the, is there any communication between you and the other members of the team so that you don't do the same maneuvers per se that may be like difficult for the patient to do? Yeah, so, uh, so usually, and this could differ depending on the school or the hospital, you don't have multiple medical students seeing the same patient mm -hmm. um, unless you're going at the same time really like when i would be on teams um i would have my certain patients that i follow and the other medical students would have their patients that they follow so we mm -hmm. wouldn't see them um no, well, well, all of us see them um but at least three people are seeing the patient. yeah because the med, at least like a med student seeing them a resident and the attending but basically how it works so doesn't matter who comes first, the medical student or the resident. It kind of just depends on who gets there first in the morning. Um, but I usually introduce myself as the medical student and I just ask the patient, is it okay if I talk with you for a bit, um, examine you, and then the resident will come in and the attending physician will see you later as well. Kind of good to just have multiple eyes on you. So you kind of preface with mm. that. And I feel like most of the time, if not all the time, they really appreciate it because they like having multiple people come to see them. The only time they don't um, is when it's super early in the morning because then they have so many patients coming to bother me and so many people coming to bother me. Yeah. Um, but you don't hear that all the time. And it depends on what time around. You want to be the first one that goes in. <laughs> yeah, you want to be the exact. <laughs> That's the hack. You want to be the first one that goes in to so wake up early. Um, and then, so it's all like, the attending sometimes we'll see them on their own um, most of the time the attending will see them like with the team mm -hmm. otherwise after round they can go by themselves and see them but usually like all pre-chart on the patient look up you know did anything happen overnight like anything significant like what medications are they on it's different how much you're going to pre-chart for a new patient or someone you've just been following um and then how much time do you give yourself to chart you have to give yourself enough time so everyone's gonna have a different amount and it depends on the medical history of the patient too is it accepted mm. or, is, or is this has this patient been completely healthy really and no major problems mm. um i would say at least in the beginning aim to give yourself like 20 minutes if you want a really per thorough patient. per patient if you want a very thorough chart review especially in the beginning when you're not sure you know what's pertinent and what's not and you kind of just want to gather as much information as you can and then um make sure you're you're really reading in depth like what the other doctors had in mind not necessarily that you're going to copy what they have to say or agree with them 
Um, but for example, like read their physical exam. So when you go in the room, you kind of have an idea what to expect and you can see if anything has changed within the last couple of hours. And then you come back, regroup with the resident. That's like the highest yield thing I can tell you. Always discuss your assessment and plan with the resident before you present it to the attending, if the resident has time. Because they will correct you on things and they will offer their feedback too because mm -hmm. they see the patient. And like if we're pre-charting together and I have a couple questions based on what I've seen in the, in the charts, I'll ask them before they even go see the patient just to kind of get my mind thinking about like differentials mm -hmm. and things I should be doing when I go in to examine the patient and then um, definitely come back when we both see them. Yeah, it was like, uh, if, if the rounds were to start at 9 oh, or 9.30 What time should you see the patient? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it depends um, So if you're seeing, let's say, like four patients Give yourself, at least in the beginning, maybe like an hour to pre-chart on them um, So rounds start at 9.30, you said, right? So let's say one hour um, And then you don't want to take, here's another good thing You don't want to take everything you read about in the chart as is Mm. I like to ask patients recheck. questions, recheck, because you never know how much time somebody had putting it in or what they understood, um, especially in the emergency room because mm. they're so rushed and they, they usually don't take the time to ask very thorough questions. Um, okay. So give yourself enough time to be able to ask them the pertinent questions that you want and also do a full exam. Um, not that you need to do a full exam on them, obviously do whatever is most pertinent, but if you want to get into the practice or the habit of doing a complete exam. Okay, so what is a complete exam. exam for you? So on internal medicine, it's definitely cardiac, pulmonary, and abdominal, always, and always check the vitals because that's going to be a healthy <laughs> specialty. And then it also depends on what the, the chief complaint is or like the... Uh, I guess acting diagnosis is because if it's a patient who's followed by neurology, let's say, or um, neurology hasn't come yet, but they were consulted, do a full neurologic exam before neurology comes. Before neurology comes, yeah, and start having an idea. Um, or if a patient tells you, admits to a new symptom and it's a neurologic symptom, do an exam um, okay. before neurology is even considered. Um, so one question before we move into the next topic is. Do you go see the the nurses right before you see the patient or how does it work with the relationship with the nurses? I like to see them before I see the patient because they can tell you if anything happened overnight. If like anything concerning or even, I mean you can see this in like their medic, you can see what medications they got but um, let's say you already did your pre-charting and you come to see the nurse and the patient just got a medication so they can tell you that. Um, because you would have missed it when you did your chart review. Um, they can tell you also, like, you know, the mental status of the patient. Is the patient confused? I had that recently. Okay. Um, or like, sometimes too, they can possibly pick up on physical exam things or if they think that something's just off, they can mention it. So I would say see them before you see the patient to get that information. And then also, if you're talking to a patient and you feel like something's off, you can ask the nurse about it afterwards too and say like, you know, did the patient mention this to you? Did okay. they give you any information? Um, or how did this look yesterday when you were here with the patient? And they can kind of update you at that. Okay, so now for me that I'm in this stage of preparation but I'm still not there, I have maybe a couple months. <laughs> what will be some common drugs or treatment plans that are must know or that you would recommend for me to review, at least for internal medicine? For internal medicine, the basics, I think they're called their bread and butter, are <laughs> like hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol. Um, no, have MD Cal, because that's another good app, because there are a lot of calculators and they're always coming up on internal medicine. Um, you have like the Padua score, which is useful in telling you if the patient needs DVT prophylaxis, which is a big thing in internal medicine too. Because there's but is it not like that. I had a question about DVT prophylaxis also because I went once to the hospital and they say mm -hmm. they give DVT prophylaxis to almost everybody. Is that the case? Yeah, I think they give it to almost everybody, but there are certain times when you wouldn't give it to them, like 
and it's kind of, it can get kind of confusing because you think like malignancy, for example, mm -hmm. or cancer makes somebody more prone, like more hypercoagulable. Um, so you would expect that those patients would be on DVT prophylaxis, but there are certain cancers, I think like uh, melanoma or breast cancers, in which case you want to keep them off of pharmacologic. DBT prophylaxis, but you can put the compression like stockings on them, um, and then you can also calculate the, the Padua score will give you their risk score and it'll tell you um, whether the patient needs to be on DBT prophylaxis or not. Um, but also you base it off of like how long is the patient going to be there in the hospital? If it's one night, you probably don't need to put them on it. But one problem and I think it's important for students to keep in mind too because you can be the savior on the team mm -hmm. um, if you have a patient who's expected to be there for one night not started on DVT prophylaxis and by the time you see them maybe they've been there for like five days now without DVT prophylaxis because something happened and they stayed um, you can be the one to say hmm, I noticed this patient doesn't have any doesn't DVT have. prophylaxis maybe we should put them on something so okay. Because it can yeah. be like it, the time that they get discharged can be delayed and like that. Exactly. They end up staying too much. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And then right now I wanted to break it down so that our video is not super long, but I wanted to break down um, between the specialties. So I'm, I'm going to um, just name the ones that are given in art school, but I'm sure like it's very similar for most of the other schools. They cover the same main ones, which is like OUN, psychiatry, surgery, internal med. So I'm gonna just name them in separate, and I'm just gonna ask you um, to tell me your perspective on how to do well in that specific rotation. Okay how like some mistakes to avoid in that specific rotation what makes the rotation special okay. things like that okay, okay. <laughs> so we're gonna start with OBGYN okay always make sure you have a chaper a chaperone in the room with you so that can be nurse or another medical student um or even like resident attending of course just make sure there's someone else in the medical profession in the room with you or taking care of the patient in the room with you um especially when or not always but when you, like a patient's postpartum and you have to check if they have any lacerations let's say from a vaginal delivery or you have to also assess like what color their lochia is which is like their vaginal discharge after giving birth um so that's not to miss because you never want to have any liability okay. um for, for the gym yeah part of OBUN, yeah. is there any um, cases that you see in the hospital that are like emergency or is that most often like outpatient? I feel like it's most often outpatient. When I was on OBGYN, most of our cases were the OB, the OB aspect right? of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you had patients who would come in for scheduled deliveries or they would come in with, you know, if they're pregnant and they have an emergency and they're staying there for possibly days to months before they have to give birth. Does but it also include like hysterectomies and stuff like that? Yeah, so that's mostly on the GYN mm -hmm. side. Um, so at least the group that I worked with, the hospitalists that I worked with, also had like a separate outpatient practice. So if they had their GYN patients who were due to have a hysterectomy, they would, you know, admit them and do the procedure and watch them follow them and send them outpatient but the biggest thing i remember seeing on gyn that was like i guess emergent enough to keep the patient was um the bartolin bartolin don't know if i'm pronouncing it right gland cyst or abscess that can be very painful especially when you have a patient um who's a little all so they have they have to go to the hospital for that right um, I think for the drainage? I, yeah, yeah, they do the drainage in the hospital.